Come party. Now you ask yourself, I don't have to tell you about colonization. <laughs> hey. Or the Bible. Hey. Or anything like that. But they left us such a rich legacy. Why haven't we gone back there? Why are we still trying to make up programs when they've been there in the front of us for a long time? So let's have some profile for me. So we'll pass this mic around up there. What? Oh, oh, oh yeah, fine. Are you? Yeah, we forgot to watch the Naki Akorino. I Maharaki, the Tono Akiri. I go back to Kiri's um, inviting us, and we got a fright. And I'm actually, as I'm sitting here the whole day, I think it's been a divine intervention, whoever that divine person is. <laughs> and then um, to be here and, and hear all of Karl and um, a different aspects for me. Yes, you picked up, I have a big mouth. Yes, I have a lot of people that I can, um, they say influence. That's probably why Kim when she saw us. And, um, you know, and I'm thinking you're making me question, the caller is making me question our own healing, mm. and I can't get out of that Christian hammering, right? The hammering and the hammering. I know about colonization, taught those sorts of things, and the and but I know that a lot of us are in that situation of the Christian Krakia, and so when it comes to healing, I still go back to the Krakia. The Karakia Kratina. And so I'm not pushing that. I'm just saying, yeah, you made me think about it here. Fine. Now think about where we're at. And then you talk about the healing. I said before, jokingly, we're a Kabaka priest. But that's our Rumwa. That is our Rumwa. Mm. And so we will, you know, we're given a lifetime to that. And the life, and then the Rumwa that we give to others through, through our way of the Sri Ramaka. And I just wanted to, to add to, you know, get the Kuru on a Ramatirane and add our perspective. And it seems crazy that our perspective is so different, and yet it works, it works there yeah. for us. And as I was asking Winamu the question before, and I said, 
what he talked about and what um, Gina Widan is talking about, the Te Awaiwa, we actually need to talk about that in Te Aukaumata <coughs> because many, yeah, many don't accept it. And especially those of us, those of our phenomena that are Catholic, Mormon, whoever else, uh, don't accept that. And so you, you've um, put questions, not questions of doubt, just questions of what's next in Nine and Mata. And I'm just glad we take our, you know, we can talk about whānau, whānau resilience and all that sort of thing. And so we drag our kids along, so I drag the son, and, and in our whānau, you know, we, so she drags her kids along so they know. And we're actually quite proud of that. I don't want to say that. That our tabariki, you know, somebody had the cheek here, we don't need to make our own, her whānau, no? Oh, I'm not going to get a container for people, that's what you know, people can say, oh, how about your succession plan? What's your succession plan for your whana? And her response was, she got a huha, and she said, don't you ask me what my succession plan is. What's yours? Can your kids work the right? Can your kids work at the taumata or the paipai? Can your kids plan a huita, that sort of thing, and it touches on? values that somebody was talking about and in, and one of the speakers were talking about it. So I feel my quarter is so insignificant compared to some of these but great chiefs <laughs> who have been called great chiefs. And yet it's real because we're on the ground. We work with lots and lots of people. We work with lots and lots of people. And we have them here who take out our whatever through the medium of Aka, through the medium of Fano or whatever else. I just wanted to say that because you're causing us to question uh, where we're at, mm. where we're at. Not question what we're doing, but where we're at in our spaces. Kill the voice again, kill the other. Pass it around. So let's have, let's have a discussion, people, and, and we'll pass the mic up there. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. Um, Kia ora, I'll introduce myself earlier. Okay, I have, um, I'm going to go for a quick chronological of my life. 18, I was hapu, I moved out of Wotaki to um, Jackson Street. They labelled me, I had a breakdown, drug induced psychosis. Yes, at that time I was smoking marijuana, but there were actually other societal um, underpinning layers there. In that journey, it was like a really bad trip. Um, I saw my tupuna, I saw myself being buried. I saw myself flying around the Upa. My daughter, I was lucky to keep my daughter. She's through my team. We've got whānau names. Lizzie Tia is my whānau name. And Rumati. Her name was, she got out of a broken heart. She was a man. Um, she was in a previous um, gifted in marriage. Um, I know for myself that was a why we were awakening. The doctors couldn't, um, the doctors couldn't, didn't understand it. I couldn't talk for myself. I'm going back 35 years. I couldn't talk for, for myself. My mothers talked for me. They thought um, if they get a tohunga back then to Manawarua, uh, Palmerston North, that um, they could help me. We got Matakiti. I got told when I was 15 that I was um, doomsday lady from one of our Okuya, Kitipuai Te Omari. I didn't understand that until late, later, and it's only been in the last three years that um, through the help of my husband, Simon, um, that I've started to stop, look, and listen. I saw things when I was younger. I didn't understand it. My father shut down his mother, Kite, because he lived at Roko in Marae Motaki. Um, he didn't realise that Motai Tangata Te Rauhi's beer, which was in, uh, getting fixed, he went out and caught heaps of tuna. With that and he got a hiding. He's half Maori, half Chinese. My um, grandfather went back to China. We don't, I'm, I'm chasing that fucker papa now. Um, my question is how, how can us, I know you're doing wairua um, stuff now for people who have those skills. Um, suicide and motaki is rife. So your question is? My question is, how can we help our people, and I'm going across the board, 
um, to get assistance from government and have alternative healing. Okay, yeah. Has anybody got an answer for that? Do they think anyone else has got? There you go. There. She, there you go. I've been a whānau water navigator for the last 10 years and what we do is focus on whānau dreams and aspirations. Now, if I don't know where they were five years ago, they know where they are now, it's where do they see themselves. And that's the space that I work in. Very privileged space. Um, and we use a model called Te Arafana Ora. Now, what it starts with is a moimoya. Everybody has a moimoya. Nobody dreams and aspires to be mate. Come. Um, but everybody dreams and aspires to be somewhere better or do better for themselves from where they are, to, from where they are today. Um, when we look at a mōmuya, we also look at te hiri tangata. So te hiri tangata is like a genogram, or the people that you think that can offer you to get to your mōmuya. Nera? So it's all an aspiration. Then we look at te whare tapawha. Now we use that model that Uncle Mason had created, that actually goes way back to um, Māori Woman's Welfare League back in the day. But that model we use as a, as a two phase problem. Like I'm not very good with type of words. But anyway, the model itself looks at Kumanoa and Kia to Titiro. Things that you have already and things that you don't have that can contribute to your mōmuya. Everything goes back to your mōmuya. Because if Fano don't have a buy-in, then why would they even follow or aspire to do whatever they people tell them to. For years we've been told what to do. It's about what matters to whānau, not what's a matter. When you ask that question, whānau actually stop and think about, actually what does matter to me? What matters to me as a person, to me as my whānau, whānau hapu iwi. Now when we frame the question up like that, we're not looking at all our hara. We're looking at things that add value to us to get to where we need to be. Now, if we were all to focus on more and more are, or dreams and aspirations, and when we were to look at and utilise te hiri tangata, people that add value to us moving forward, and then utilise the model of health that we use called whare tapawha with whānau, tīnana, wairu and hiningaru, we're going to start using things that add value to us as being Māori and things that we can relate to. So that brings in our pūrākau, that brings in our rungo Māori, that brings in our tōhonganism, because those are the things that add value to us as being Māori. Yeah? Mm. In order to get all that, this is where we can get those different tōhonga or that different pūtia, or the stuff that we need that adds value, in order for us to be take the order. Mm. Now for us to have that, we, we have these seven outcomes. The seven whānau <coughs> outcomes for us is tūno ranga tiratanga, Whānau self-management. How well do we do that? What are we doing now for it and what can we do later on? The next thing is whānau cohesion, ko tahitanga. You know, how good are we at that? Whānau are good at burning down bridges. How do we build the bridge up so that we can walk over and meet in the middle? How can we do that? What else is possible? The number one is pāpuritanga. What in society can we utilise to get to our mōmoya? What are the things that society has for us that we can tap into that will contribute to our main goal or our moi moia? Everything's about the moi moia. Then we also look at um, um, things within there. Hauoranga. That's where the tohonganism or whatever you want to call it can come into play. Don't forget we're about talking about being Māori, who we are, the indigenous person, not who we are in the Pākehā world, who we are in the Māori world. Then we also have um, Te Ao Māori's whānau participation in Māori society. What in Māori society can add value to us moving forward to our mōmuya? Alright? And then we have Te Akitai Ao. What in our environment? <laughs> Your motel, how